It's season eight of the PokerStars.com European Poker Tour. We're back in the German capital and the fuse is lit. How much do you have left? Two American heavyweights surrender nothing. I've only done something like this a couple times ever. Trading blows. Come on, man. When friends become foes, anything can happen. My plan was to snap. Who will prevail? Will it be the might of Vanessa Selbst or the proven pedigree of Kevin McPhee? Run for cover as we approach the conclusion of day three of EPT Berlin. Title defense, <laughs> two years later. Berlin provides the setting for the latest leg of the European Poker Tour, and as always, the tournament's attracted a packed out field. 745 players took up the challenge and anted up 5,000 euros, producing a prize pool of more than 3.7 million. 60 players remain, and the name of the game right now is Survival, as we race towards the conclusion of day three. The 24 left standing at the end will be a step closer to the title and a life changing first prize of 825,000 euros. Last time, Season 7 Snowfest champion Vladimir Geshkenbein attempts to bluff his way through a swingy start to the day. There's always a turn in the river, you know. And what goes up must come down. Anton Wig lost the chip lead, then took a nosedive. Whereas the super aggro Vanessa Selbst did what she does best, busting opponents and stacking chips. After crushing the live scene in the States, the two-time NAPT champion has her sights firmly set on EPT glory. But in the hunt for the title, she'll be shown no mercy. I've had some history with Kevin McPhee. He just hates folding to me. Like, he hates it, hates it. American pro McPhee has proved himself on this stage before, but knows he faces one of his toughest opponents ever. If you don't adapt your ranges to a player like Vanessa, you're going to get chewed up and spit out. Joining them at the feature table is the unassuming Canadian pro Andrew Chen. He came agonizingly close to EPT Brilliance in Prague back in season five. I've had a couple of close calls on uh... EPT final tables before, so perhaps take it down would be great. And out in the field is Spelling Bee champion turned poker pro Pratush Badiga, hoping to mix it with the best. One of my best friends, he is, he is Heinz, uh, last year's main event champion. If this works out well, I could be famous for something else in poker. <laughs> We're well into day three, and it's time to see who'll buckle under the pressure as the final 60 play down to the final 24. There's the tournament chip leader, Mark Wright, on our secondary feature table. And the player who's second in chips is on our main feature table, Vanessa Selbst. People say Vanessa Selbst is one of the best female players in the game. Wrong. One of the best players in the game, period. You're like, oh, I hope I don't look stupid on TV. And then I like, call King Queens like aces. <laughs> like, yeah. Yep. Goal accomplished, look stupid on TV. It's really not that hard to do. I make my living at it. Andrew Chen is an EPT grinder, doesn't say much, walks softly and carry a big stack. Anton Wiggs, an EPT champion, unfortunately yesterday he slipped harder than a cartoon cat on a banana peel. Wiggs still above average in chips with a stack of 468,000. Vanessa obviously the chip daddy here. Andreas Vlakos is also a big stack and he does have position on Vanessa, although that didn't really work to his advantage earlier. Well, speaking of cartoons, expect Vanessa Selbst and Kevin McPhee to clash like Roadrunner and Wiley E. Coyote. Blinds 4,000, 8,000 with a 1,000 ante. Action has been folded to Kevin McPhee. Eight six of diamonds. He's raising, a min raise under the gun plus one. And so it begins. Tim Bettengen has folded. Pascal Hartman gets out of the way. Anton Wiggs not interested. Vanessa's on the button and she's got pocket sevens. How much did you start the hand with? 500. Vanessa likely doesn't know just how light Kevin was raising, so she'll probably just want to take a flop in position. She calls. Andreas Vlakos has ace queen. Against two players who are as live as Kevin and Vanessa, I don't know how you don't three bet here. Pardon the double negative. Well, he just calls out of the small blind. Ace Queen does not have the best implied odds in this spot. Mihai Manole folds the big, so we go three way to the flop. Sit up straight and slip. Suck it in your gut. 
the flop. Is ace high. Vlachos takes the lead. Misses everyone else. Then check to Vanessa on the button. Check. And she checks behind. Even if she liked her hand, I don't think she'd want this pot getting much bigger. Check. Eight of spades on the turn. Kevin now has a pair. Check. But it's been checked around one more time. Another ace on the river. Vlachos with trips. Last train to Valueville. I'd be pretty surprised if he got looked up. He bets 27,000. Come on, Kevin's reaching for chips. He calls. No way Vanessa can overcall. Sevens are never good here. She lets it go, and Vlachos will show the winning hand. Guess that last ace really helped out Vlachos. Kevin basically had to be putting him on a stone bluff. Vlachos now up to 810,000. Kevin down to 457,000, but still among the tournament chip leaders, 10th on the leaderboard overall. Vlachos is fourth in chips. Third at the moment is Vladimir Gesh combined, and more chips could be Vlad heading Vlad's in. way. He's got Martin Jakobsen all in as a four to one underdog. Not a good flop for two sixes. Yakety Jakobsen, don't talk Jakobsen. He needs a six on the river to survive. And Martin Jakobsen is eliminated. The eights were good, buddy. You didn't have to go making a straight on top of it. That's just mean. On the secondary feature table, Pratish Badiga has gone to the flop against Elkin Amarov. Amarov has bet 21,000. Pratish is a spelling bee champ. I heard he won the first round from just correctly spelling his own name. I like that little finger flourish. This looks like a race. Rodiga makes it 48k. Amarov will make the call and we go to the turn. Ten of clubs. No draws came in, but a few more did develop. Having check raised the flop, Rodiga now leads the turn for 72,000. Amarov makes the call. Big pot building here, 283,000 in the middle. Amarov not leaving himself a ton behind. King of clubs on the river. Bodega shoves. Pocket uses pocket fires, right? Amarov. Okay, cool. cool. Makes the call, and Bodega does show pocket fives for a full house. And that's gotta be good. Yeah, come on, show everyone how bad it was. Oh, Amarov had a king. Sick. Worst river ever. No idea how you're supposed to get away from that. Pratush Badiga just bladed the pants off of Amarov. Badiga doubles up to 967,000. He is now third in chips overall, just behind Vanessa Selp, still second on the leaderboard, playing 122 big blinds. Action is on Vanessa, and with pocket four, she raises from under the gun plus one to 17k. Nine ten of diamonds for Mihai Manole, he folds. Andrew Chen gets out of the way. Kevin McPhee has ace nine off suit on the button. Ace nine can be a bit of a troublesome hand, but Vanessa's very active and Kevin could be ahead of her range. Kevin re-raises, it's a three bet to 37,000. Tim Bettengen has junk in the small blind and folds. Pocket sixes for Pascal Hartman in the big. Well, obviously Pascal's actually got the best hand, but it's pretty tough to get involved at this point, especially out of position. He folds, it's back on Vanessa. Now Vanessa knows how little credit Kevin's gonna be giving her for a hand most of the time. Looks like she's got a pretty good read on this situation. Liv supporting both her friend Vanessa and boyfriend Kevin. She's super. Vanessa re-raises a four bet to 79,000. Against just about any other player, I think this is the point where Kevin would probably ditch this like an ugly date on prom night. Whoa, he's just five bet to 131,000. Aya with ace nine offsuit. Now take what I just said about Kevin and apply it to Vanessa. How much do you have left? You know, like this many. This is absolute insanity with these two hands. Did we get the graphics right? 
smaller. She's six best shoves. Double I, uh... She'll probably have the best hand. It's possible you're gonna have the best hand against Vanessa, but I just don't know how often she's doing this with a hand that Ace-9 is crushing. Hmm. Such a sick spot. It's almost enough out there for me to just call it off. And I think I dominate some of your range sometimes. And then crush if it's just a value. Well, it's neither of those except for the fact that he's somehow gotten himself into a spot where he's getting almost four to one. I just feel like my hand is good here for some reason. Just, gotta read. just take every spot. How did this happen? If he calls here, this is going to be very, very ugly for someone, namely Liv. I've only done something like this a couple times ever. I know you've got to consider the source, but this is absolutely insane. He's painted himself into a real corner here. My plan was to snap as, as far as this wide as I thought you were going to shove. So I'm, I, think, I think I have to do it. Title defense. <laughs> Two years later, I call. OMG, he calls! You have ace jack? No. I have a pair. I have an ace nine. Correct reaction. You're complicit in this too, Selfsty. What just happened? Huh? Just think that's a snap? Snap fold, yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure about that. There's him. Nice call, I guess. If you're shoving fours, you're probably shoving ace five seeds and stuff. Can't imagine that you would exclude those from your range if fours are in there. He does have a point. The flop has an ace on it. Because you're Vanessa Selbst. McPhee takes the lead. Vanessa needs a four. Sick race. Nice son. McPhee set to get a huge double up here. And another ace for good measure. The needle. She can't believe it. I can't believe it. Can you believe it? As hard as it is to believe, that just happened. Very nice, him. You think she means it? I don't think she means it. Well, however he got there, McPhee is now in a great spot to defend his title from two years ago. My plan was to call, but I it's wanted to make no, sure. It's a nice I mean, one. I just wanted to think it all through. What you're looking at right here is the aftermath of an all-out leveling war. Does Liv even know what happened? She's about to find out. This is gonna be one awkward plane ride home. The worst play I've ever seen. What? She like was after me every time. I have no idea why. He's a friend of mine. You put that on TV. It's the worst play ever. I don't know why friends going after me, but he does it every single tournament. He goes after me. Something tells me this isn't over. Welcome back to day three of the Berlin leg of the European Poker Tour from the Grand Hyatt, hosted by the Spielbank Berlin. Before the break, we saw how ugly things get when friends turn on each other. He's a friend of mine. You put that on TV. It's the worst play ever. I don't know why friends going after me, but he does it every single tournament he goes after me. Well, as the saying goes, there are no friends at the poker table. Let's hear from Vanessa and find out the method behind the madness. So I play this hand um, against Kevin McPhee. I've had some history with him. Like, he has a history where he just hates folding to me. Like, he hates it. I raise to 17,000 and he makes it 37,000 on the button. When he's on the button, he's gonna have a much wider range than in other places. So in this spot with his stack size, I just didn't think it made sense to, for him to three bet hands like fives through like eights and maybe nines. I expect him to flat call with those. So I thought like if I four bet and he five bets, pocket fours is a really good hand to do that to decide what you wanna do with. Because if I get a bad feeling, I feel like he's really strong, I can always like go against my plan and fold. But if I think he's gonna five bet me with a really wide range of hands, fours is a great hand to shove with because if he doesn't have five th fives through nines, his value range is like tens, jacks, queens, kings, aces, an ace king and an ace queen and maybe ace jack. So against that value range, um, because there's a lot more combinations of ace king, ace queen, and ace jack, I'm actually like 40% or something. Smaller. 
So if in the case that I get called by that range, I'm still not doing too terribly because he's gonna have ace king and ace queen a lot. Title defense, <laughs> two years later, I call. I think that what makes it a really bad play with ace nine in his spot, I don't have middle pairs in my range, so if he re-raises me and I have a pair of eights or something, I'm just gonna call with our stack depth. But once I go all in, I don't ever have those hands. My range is basically like tens or better, ace queen or better, and then like occasionally small pairs, like fours, threes, five, sixes. Something like 80% of the time or more, he's gonna run into a hand that he has three outs against. He put his tournament life on the line in a spot where like there's just no reason to. And, um, you know, he ran into one of the hands that he happened to be coin flipping against, and he won the coin flip, and that's how it goes, you know. It's tough in poker sometimes when you have these friends that are traveling the circuit with you, and you're playing these, like, really high-stakes tournaments, and sometimes, um, I guess I have a tendency to take things too personally. Um, Kevin and I have some history in these tournaments where he's made what I think are kind of insane plays against me a lot. I mean, if we are really good players, and other people aren't as strong in the field to, to basically put us both in a situation where we're flipping coins when instead of being able to realize our edge in more sure situations against other people, it's just costing us both money. Yo, five bit induced for 50 blinds with ace nine. Only works against Vanessa subs. Like I said, I've only done that play a couple times. Sick play. Got me. Two things. One, Vanessa's range is way wider than she made it out to be. And two, Kevin doesn't need to be pushing what he hopes to be such a marginal edge against a huge stack and a great player. Now, both of you, stop it. Vanessa back in the action, racing under the gun with 5-4. And Kevin McPhee wants to play another pot against her. Oh, boy. He's just calling this time with the ace-10 in position. That's got to look like the nuts this time, eh, K-Mac? Play on her first. I'll tell you later. Both blinds get out of the way, so it's Seltz versus McPhee. Round two. Kevin likely to know he's pretty far ahead here. No one connects with that flop. Swing and a miss. Vanessa checks, and Kevin checks behind. No reason to bet there. Vanessa picks up a straight draw. Here comes the delayed continuation bet. She bets 28,000. Kevin might think he has the best hand, but he's pretty likely to be facing another barrel from Vanessa on the river as well, and this board is all over her range. He gives it up. Consolation prize, Vanessa? One question, though, seriously. When are Mommy and Daddy gonna stop fighting? What did you make of what's become known as the hand? Let us know. Use that hashtag on Twitter. All in on the outer tables. Pull it in. Let's check. 55 players remain in the tournament. It's about to become 54. If Kuhn Devisha doesn't spike a nine, he doesn't. He's out in 55th for 13,000 euros. He must have learned that from watching Kevin McPhee. Guess combined back up to 685K. You guys, I already told you I don't do Belgiumese. What is that? You're making me look like an idiot in here. I don't know how I can make it any more clear. English. Oh, hadn't heard about this hand, had you? Not only did Kevin induce a shove, but he also induced bleeding, vomiting, and probably a dented garbage can out in the lobby. Crazy hand, understatement of the year. Kevin McPhee now sixth on the leaderboard after doubling through Vanessa Selps. Mark Wright still leads, while Pratish Padiga has just dropped out of the top 10. The biggest stack at our feature table is Andrew Chen, playing 118 big blinds. Blinds are still four and eight with a 1K ante. Action's on, Pascal Hartman. <coughs> He's picked up pocket threes under the gun, plus one. He min raises. Good luck, threes. You got a lot of maniacs to get through. One of them's folded. But Vanessa Selps decides to three bet her button with queen seven off. Selps D is on the warpath. See ya. Andrew Chen has picked up nines in the big blind. Chen may not get into it much at the table, but he's no slouch. He knows how strong nines are against Vanessa's range. He does have the fairly early raise from Hartman to contend with, however. He four bets to 78K. Hartman quickly folds. Smallish four bet. Vanessa has to quickly go through all the scenarios where she shoves and gets snapped off again. And... She lets it go. Andrew Chen wins with a four-bet preflop, and he can't even look at her. He takes more chips away from Vanessa. Heck of a drop right there after her hand with Kevin McPhee. It actually doesn't read so bad if you read it right to left. Andrew Chen now up over a million. 
Let's head to our secondary feature table. It's Mark Wright versus Pratush Badiga. Wright's made it 21K on the button. Pratush, three bets, makes it 57K. It'd be awesome if he took the chips back then tried to fold. Love that move. And when the chips come back, that normally implies a re-raise. And sure enough, we see a four bet to 93,000. All in. Pratush shoves, and Mark Wright wastes no time in folding. Don't shoot. Bodega's stack doing some yo-yoing today, but he's back up amongst the chip leaders with a stack of nearly 750,000. Thank you. My name is Pratush Bodega, and I'm from the USA. I only started playing poker two years ago, and I've come a long way. One of my best friends and the person who's probably helped me the most in poker uh, actually is from Germany. Everyone knows him, P.S. Heinz, uh, last year's main event champion. We've been really good friends since three or four months after I started playing poker because we were in the same uh, chat group with a few other people. And when I looked at the EPT schedule, that was one I really wanted to come because I wanted to hang out with him and other people. I lived with him all summer in Vegas and we were playing the World Series events together. When PS won the main event, it sounds absurd to say because it didn't directly involve me, but it was probably one of the top five moments of my life because it was just so amazing that one of your best friends has actually won it. Uh, I was actually in the audience for that. Uh, you might remember me as the crazy Indian guy from the first row. I guess I could be kind of famous for that, but maybe if this works out well, I could be famous for something else in poker. <laughs> So he's boys with P.S. Hines. Mike McDonald is his coach. Let me guess, Vanessa Selfs and Doyle Brunson are his adopted parents. Come on! Back to the feature table, where they're playing seven-handed at the moment. Actions on Andreas Vlakos. I like this Vlakos guy. Look at him, he's smiley. He's got Ace King under the gun. He raises, a men raise to 16K. William Torson's just joined the table. Boy, he's lost some weight, huh? Good for you, Billy. A lot of calories and booze. A lot of calories. He just flats. That call may be looser than his old trousers. 25,000 chips. Andrew Chen has ace queen of diamonds. Well, no way he folds obsies, and no way he just calls either. There's the three bet, a total of 55,000. Everyone else running for the hills. Vanessa has pocket jacks in the big blind. She calls the three bet. Interesting just call from Vanessa. By doing this, she both balances her range and prevents taking another flip. What does Vlakos do now? The action's back on him. He folds. Very tight fold from Vlakos. We know there were some aces and kings out there, but I don't see how you fold ace king to a three bet with a bunch of other supposed dead money out there. Very curious. Well, at least Torson doesn't compound his error by calling again. He was getting better in three to one. The flop is Queen Deuce Jack. Top pair for Chen, a set for Vanessa Selps. This could get very ugly for Andrew Chen. Looks like Vanessa's thinking of donking out here. Chen was the last aggressor. She does donk, she bets 80,000. This is probably gonna look pretty funny to Andrew, but I'd say his chances of getting away here are about as good as Vanessa and I dating. Counts out. 80,000 chips, he will make the call. He makes the call, drawing nearly dead. Only 7% equity. 313,000 in the middle. Eight of diamonds on the turn. Chen does now have a flush draw. Flush draw to go with this top pair. Now his chances of getting away are about as good as me and live dating. Great spot for Vanessa to keep firing. She bets 150,000. She's probably putting Andrew on his exact hand, though it may be more difficult to sense the fact that he's also got diamonds. Andrew Chen, a very deliberate player. He elects to make the call, which means we will go to the river. The pot now 613,000. Vanessa with just over 300 behind. Chen gets there on the river. No, no. 
I'm on with Nicole. Vanessa shoves! Chen insta calls and shows her he's got the nuts! And Vanessa Selps is out of here. That is incredible. A few hands ago, Vanessa Selps was second in chips in the tournament. Now she's out. 48th place. She will be bitterly, bitterly disappointed. Very unfortunate for Vanessa that Andrew had the diamonds. Honestly, I like the shove a lot. Ace Queen is going to pay you off almost every time. Game, yeah, Vanessa. It's sick. Let's just let this awkward silence hang for a while. Get the full effect. Well, we thought Vanessa had regained her composure after that hand against Kevin McPhee. But she found herself on the wrong side of a brutal cooler to hit the rail here at EPT Berlin. If you want to play in an EPT event, go to PokerStars.com, where there are qualifiers every day. Welcome back to the German capital for the PokerStars.com EPT Berlin. So we've just witnessed the shock exit of American pro Vanessa Selbst, leaving the TV table speechless. Her elimination was a cooler, but the same can't be said for the hand that changed her tournament. Kevin McPhee made a really, really bad play against me. Only done something like this a couple times ever. Which is frustrating, he's a friend of mine. I mean, I talked to Kevin a little bit at the table, but he didn't really say much. I have no idea what he was thinking. That hand left both Kevin and Vanessa with their emotions running high, but spare a thought for the innocent party in all this carnage. Liv Barry was left not knowing which way to turn. We came down to see how Kevin's doing. Vanessa's pretty steamed at the moment. Uh, with Kevin, she thinks that he's uh, targeting her deliberately. And I'm kind of stuck in the middle because she's like my best friend and he's my boyfriend. You can see Kevin's looking over, seeing her bitching about him to me. And I'm just trying to be like, go Kevin, oh Vanessa, oh it's terrible. Oh, oh. So yeah, I'm just completely torn. Kevin's play may have been the catalyst to Vanessa's demise. She was after me every time, like why does he do that? Well, it's about time we heard from the man himself calling a six-bet shove with ace-nine off. Really? It probably won't show up on television, but she was raising most hands. I mean, I know how she plays late in these tournaments. In, in Madrid, she six-bet shoved jack-nine offsuit into Nick Sweetie's aces. When she won Mohegan Sun, she very infamously five-bet shoved eight four suited into aces and went on to win the tournament. So, I mean, I think that Vanessa is one of these people that when it comes to the point in the tournament when you have a polarized range, that she more than other people will be weighted towards garbage hands. She looks like she doesn't want to give up on the hand and I don't feel like she's super strong here and she four bets. I go ahead and click it back because I feel like my click back here is going to win a lot of the time. Not only that, I feel like ace nine is the best hand a lot in this spot. I'm all in. And if she shoves, I'm pretty much intending to snap her off. Title defense, <laughs> two years later, I call. You have ace jack? No. I have a pair. I have an ace nine. If you incorporate jack seven suited, eight four suited, all of these random things that she's shown that she's done in the past into her range, then I feel like she is, yes, weighted more towards bluffs. I don't know, for some reason he like goes after me in tournaments, so I'm not really sure why he does it. She's obviously coming after me, and then has the audacity to tell me I'm coming after her, which is absurd. I'm not coming after her. In fact, I'm five betting. She's shoving. So how am I coming after her if I'm calling? I'm not coming after her. I'm defending myself from somebody who's taking every spot. I guess I got, um you know, really heated about it and upset about it. And so I definitely regret, like, the way I reacted to him at the table. It, you know, wasn't appropriate, but I guess sometimes your emotions just get the best of you. Like, it's one of those things, like, I want to win a second EPT, she wants to win an EPT. So when you combine the fact that winning for both of us is so important, kind of makes, like, a hand like this an inevitability. Yep, ace nine versus yeah. pocket fours for a bajillion big blinds. Totally, totally inevitable. Action is on Kevin McPhee. With ace queen off suit in mid position, he makes it 16,000. Nice. Bahadir Kilakaza has just arrived at the table and he's already three betting with queen 10 off. Not sure about this move. He also did it super fast. Anton Wig on the button has queen jack. Kevin's got everyone dominated. 
And Tom Wig, four bets to 77,000. What is going on here? Against tightish players, Ace Queen will often not be the best hand here. Also, Kevin's out of position. Kevin folds the best hand. How much is this? Killer Kayser seems intent on winning this pot. Surely he's not thinking of New race. Five betting? He is thinking of five betting, James. And stop calling me Shirley. How to announce you've arrived at the TV table by Bahadir Killer Kayser. Well, I don't see how Anton can possibly think his hand is good. He folds. Wig thought he was re-re-stealing. Turns out he was value-raising and didn't even know it. Awesome. Let's catch up with a couple of exits from the outer tables. We've lost Phil Gruesome out in 45th place, and he's not the only high roller hitting the rail. Will Molson has been eliminated in 42nd place. Both those guys will collect 13,000 euros. Back on the TV table, blinds up. 5,000, 10,000, 1,000 ante. Anton Wig first to speak with pocket eights. He raises to 20K. Hold it around to Andrew Chen. 9-5 off, that goes in the muck. Kevin McPhee's on the button with Queen Deuce. He passes. Bahadir Kilikaza will call out the small blind with King 10 off. Off suit, it's not a mandatory re-raise out of position. It's very easy to get four bet, and then you're in no man's land. Pascal Hartman folds the big blind. Heads up to the flop. And a chance for Anton Wig to extract some revenge. Seven, five, six flop with two clubs. Sweet flop for Wig. Over pair and open-ended. Don't love a donk bet in this spot. If you had anything that good, you'd likely check and let your opponent do the work for you. I predict a 0% chance of a fold. And Tom Wig makes the call. Return card, the deuce of spades. Another good card for Wig. Very little is beating him now that wasn't before. Killer Case is betting again? His aggression may end up getting the better of him here. Another fine spot for a smooth call. Also, this bet was pretty small. Wig does call. 147,000 in the middle with one card to come. We'll have to see what the river card is, but if Killer wants this pot, he's gonna have to try a little harder. The Jack of Spades on the river. Killer bets a third time, 77K. It's only about half the pot. My guess is Killer getting looked up here more often than the definition of the word anti disestablishmentarianism Almost, almost. So close. Wig does call. Oh. You have to show your card, sir. King high. Whoops. Pocket eights. We'll win the pot. Wig adds 158k to his stack. Sure, Killer Kayser fired three barrels, but it was a really weird line, and some of those barrels might as well have been blanks. Anton Wig back up to over 600,000. Wig's live tournament earnings exceed 1 million euros. More than half of that came from when he won EPT Copenhagen back in season six. This is his fourth cash on the tour, and he's very good friends with another EPT champion. Yeah, I'm friends with Kevin. He's a good friend of mine. Well, I got position, so uh, I'm pretty sure I made his, his life a little bit harder than he did mine today. But, you know, it's always fun hanging out with Kevin. He's a really good guy. And, uh, he's a good player too, so you know it's it's not easy, but at the same time, I mean, it's my job to make his life tough when I'm on his left and vice versa. After seeing how he treated Vanessa Selbst earlier, I think I'm all good on being Kevin McPhee's friend. Well, our secondary feature table is the next table to break. In fact, we have a three-way all-in. Ilya Gorodetsky all-in with ace-5, called by Pratush Padiga yeah. with queens. He's also got Norbert Holting covered. Holting has ace-king. Isn't Ilya Gorodetsky the Russian James Hardigan? Please. I'm the English Ilya Gorodetsky. Well, you're both pretty skinny and pale. But Diga hits a queen on the turn. Ilya's yeah. drawing dead. He Holting needs a now. jack. The ace is too little too late. So a double elimination. Good luck. And nearly 200,000 extra chips for Pratush Padiga. 
So his roller coaster ride continues. He's now seventh on the leaderboard. Kevin McPhee has dropped down into 10th place. Mark Wright still has a dominating chip lead, nearly 2 million in chips. Andrew Chen, second overall, with a stack of 1.7 million. Jovsi gives Andrew Chen the chip lead at our feature table. Action on William Torson, he folds. Chen has pocket fives. He's in late position. And he raises to 21,000. Kevin McPhee folds the button. Killer Kaiser with nine deuce in the small blind is thinking about doing something he calls. Okay. Apparently his name is Button Clicker Kaiser. Anton Wig also has pocket fives in the big blind. Probably just a call here, though I would recommend against set mining. It's not possible, all the fives are out. Solid read, Joe. Solid read. I'm sorry, one more time. WTH is Killer Kaiser doing here? Flop. Jack for Deuce. I'm all in. And Killer Kaiser shoves for 372,000. The old stop and go. Looks like it might get through, but I'm not a huge fan of this play in general. When you get called, you're a dead man walking. Anson Wig mucks his pocket fives. What's Andrew Chen going to do? Well, this really doesn't make any sense if Killer Kaiser had a real hand. He wouldn't want to chase away all of his action. You can tell Chen's a little suspicious. Killer Kays are putting off some strong body language, at least. Pretty strong. Usually when guys are this all over the place, they've got it. Do you think he misread his hand? I don't see how. Chen folds. Killer Kayser knows he got away with one there. Let me get to the camera right there. One card. One card? Oh, a deuce. deuce. Do you do on the flop? Maybe another deuce. What do you have? Go, I had a pair. Deuce, deuce? Oh. There's a deuce on the flop, right? The only thing Bahadir Killikaze is a wholesaler of is baloney. I've read the James Bond novels. Wholesale and export trader, that means as a spy. The spy who shoved on me. <laughs> to the outer tables, where the battle between Cengiz Aluzu and Vladimir Geshkinbein continues. Gesh combines bet 155,000 on the turn and over bet. Aluzu makes the call. Thank God, Chengis Aluzu is back. Chengis Aluzu loves to call you. Deuce of spades on the river. Flush draw came in. Aluzu checks. Gesh combine. Going for a lot of chips here. Makes it 292,000. That is a large bet. Aluzu's called. Gesh combined shows a set of tens. And Aluzu concedes defeat. Gotta assume he had an ace, but I would also assume if he got sucked out on the turn, he'd be freaking out a lot more than this. Gesh combined adds 519,000 chips to his stack. And I think that's gonna be almost everything for Chengis Aluzu. No! Gesh combined back up to 865,000. So what do you think Chengiz Aluzu had there? Tweet away using the hashtag EPT Berlin. Welcome back to Berlin for the conclusion of day three of the PokerStars.com EPT. At this stage of the tournament, disappointment is lurking around every corner. We are now seven eliminations away from confirming our final 24 and the end of today's play. Lurking around every corner. That was my nickname in high school. And talking of eliminations, don't say we're about to lose Chengiz Aluzu. He's racing against Cesar Garcia. Who's in the lead right now with pocket eight? Alusu dead to a king or a nine. Chengis Alusu, I don't want to lose you. The river is a seven. We lose Alusu. There goes the most interesting man in the game. He made the final table of the German leg of the EPT back in season five. This year he finishes 31st. Caesar, we're going to need you to spice things up a little bit. You ever considered dice? You want spice? 
We've got Spice. We've got Jan, Coriander Heitman, all in against Jasper Oregano Wettermans. <laughs> Very spicy. Heitman, the player at risk and behind. Oh, with the seven of hearts. That four is inconsequential. Jan still needs to hit. And he does on the turn. I don't know how he did that. Keep your expectations low, I guess. Just has to fade an ace or a four on the river. Oh, there's an ace! Gentlemen, it has been a pleasure playing with them against you. What a class act. Kind of a brutal way to go out. I respect that. As chips go across to Jasper Wettermans, Jan Heitman will collect 17,500 euros for his 29th place finish. It was a decent sweat. Back to the feature table. Blinds 6,000, 12,000 with a 2K ante. Andreas Vlakos has a lot of chips. More than a million now. A6 of clubs. Not a huge fan of raising with this under the gun. It's just way too likely someone will wake up with a better hand or we'll just try to blow you off it. He raises to 25,000. King nine suited for William Torson. William doesn't have a lot of chips. Not sure what he's thinking about here. He decides to call. Pretty, pretty loose. When one calls, they all start calling. Kevin McPhee decides to go to the flop with a suited ace. Mahadir Kilikater with a small pocket pair will probably also flat. Perfect spot for a just call, getting four to one. Action on my college poetry professor, who folds. Heinz Kamutsky gives up his button. Aces for Anton Wig in the small blind. Wow, this is lucky. Not only waking up with aces, but in a spot where you're not likely to get much credit at all. This will so look like a squeeze. Anton Wig makes it a total of 108,000. Andre Murat has also just joined the feature table. He gives up the big blind. We're back on Vlakos. I said someone might wake up with a better hand after Vlakos. Well, only three people did. He folds. Well, this is an ob fold for William Torson, IMO. Mullen. What? He shoves with zero fold equity. He's got less fold equity than a laundry service on a nudist colony. Kevin McPhee's got out the way. Action's on Killer Kaiser. I fold. Easy fold. And Anton Wig makes an easy call. William's not going to like it. Can't really explain his thought process there. Well, he flopped a diamond at least. Yeah, he's going to need two more of those. Stranger things have happened. Well, that takes away the diamond draw, but it does give him a straight draw. He needs a 10 on the river. Three outs for Torson. It's another jack. Anton Wig wins with aces and jacks. Torson's eliminated. Like trying to hook up at a funeral, this was just an ill-timed move. William made the final table of the German EPT the same year Chengiz Aluzu made the final. This year, they finish a few spots apart. Spooky. Anton Wig had some issues earlier, but now he is back with a vengeance. <laughs> well, if those three players are Kevin's quote-unquote friends, this should take no time at all. <laughs> Blinds are up. New level, 8,000, 16,000 with a 2,000 ante. <clears throat> Andrew Chen will be first to speak. Nice, pocket kings. Nice picking up kings under the gun. Usually some action to follow behind, hopefully. He raises to 34,000. Bahadir Kilikaza has 7-8 suited. <clears throat> oh boy. Kilikaza hates chips, apparently. Come on. He calls. Action folded around to Andre Murat. Jack nine in the small blind. He'll fold. Andreas Vlakos in the big blind. 10 6 suited. He'll pass. So Chen goes heads up to the flop against Killer Keita. Out of position, but with the betting lead. And also the monster favorite. Oh, flop better, Killer Keita. I'm just kidding, Kilikazer loves chips. Rose flop for Andrew Chen, super wet board. He's never gonna be able to give Kilikazer credit. He checks to Kilikazer. He knows there's a good chance Kilikazer will blast off here. 
The German bets 90,000. Now all of a sudden he's got a hand. Notice he's betting almost full pot. Gotta wonder if Andrew's gonna notice this. It's also just so easy to be semi-bluffing this board with a draw or some kind of combo draw. Oh. Chen shoves. And one presumes that Killer Kayser is gonna call. He's only got the second nuts, James. What's he doing? Last one? No. I caught. Finally. Killer Kayser, an 83% favorite to double up for Andrew Chen. Very unfortunate flaw for Andrew. Killer Kayser only has to dodge three queens, otherwise he's gonna double up. Same outs needed for Chen, with one card to come. You can barely believe it. No queen. Yes. Nice answer. Instead, a set for Andrew Chen, but Killer Kayser straight holds. You're right, he had the flush draw. Ha! Nice eye roll, Andy. Shake it off. Nice. Yep, more than a million in chips. Must be nice. We've lost a few players from the outer tables while that was kicking off. We are down to 25. And talking of the outer tables, we've got a big pot building. Thomas Chibak against Simon Pearson. Chibak has just four bet to 161,000 pre-flop. Pearson five bet jams and gets snap called. Massage over. Queens against tens. There is an 80% chance that this will be the last hand of the day. Pearson on the verge of elimination. Looking for a 10. Only a 10 saves him. The Queens hold. Simon Pearson sent to the rail in 25th place. We have our final 24. That brings a close to day three of EPT Berlin. And Thomas Chebak has now got 2.3 million. He will be second in chips coming into day four of the tournament. Mark Wright has held the chip lead for some time. He's still the chip leader with 2.4 million. Also among the big stacks, Andrew Chen and Pratish Badiga. Next time, it's the penultimate day of EPT Berlin. Amongst the hopefuls, a trio of champions charging towards the final table. I really, really want the title more than anything. Being a two-time champion would obviously be amazing. They stand a great chance to make history. There's a fierce competition to become the second EPT champion. Nobody's done it before. Only one can claim the glory. I'm heading for the first place, obviously. But first, they must endure the perils of day four as the remaining 24 play down to our final eight.